call the meeting to order at 8.05. Um, we're going to move the global leader. We have a global leaders from coming in to join us today to do a presentation. We're going to move that to 9 o'clock. So we will start with reviewing and approving the minutes. So moved. Second. All in favor? I want to say, Mary, that these minutes yeah, are... Yeah, the minutes are awesome. Thank you. Top. Top notch. I've done minutes at Frontier before, not in comparison to your. They did not look like this. Oh, not sorry. Not like that. <laughs> exactly. You, yeah, absolutely. This is before your evaluation. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Uh, <laughs> He's emerging. <laughs> okay. Financial state. Uh, you have, uh, I think, to review, Maureen, seven warrants uh, for your signature today for a total of $40,500.21. Um, there's also uh, a set of warrants for uh, upcoming payrolls that need signatures as well. So um, that's where we're at. Um, I went and ran results for uh, the month of May, and uh, again, uh, you're looking in a very healthy place. My suggestion again at this point would be that uh, as we take a look at probably the next couple of weeks just to kind of button things up and make sure that we've got everything accounted for um, that we think about uh, doing some reclassification of expenses to take pressure off of school choice since you have the local funds um, to cover those things. Um, in the projections going forward to the end of the year I did account for uh, the gym floor refinishing as well as um, some other maintenance projects that Bob wants to try and get accomplished before the end of the year. Um, also, there's a need for some uh, summer custodial support, and these projections also account for that uh, happening. Uh, I think this starting is coming Monday, as a matter of fact. So, um, I think, uh, again, you're in a strong position, which is uh, uh, you know, a good, th good place to be in. So, again, we can and take some of that for so the school choice. Instead of taking, um, if we have a little funds left at, at the end of the year, your suggestion that we should use, offset some of the school choice and make that a little healthier yeah. versus um, maybe adding another classroom or carpeting or something like that? Or I have some other things on my- To-do list? On, well, on my wish list. Okay. One of the things that um, I would like to see happen at some point is for the pre-K kids to be able to eat in the cafeteria with kindergartners and first graders. And the furniture we have now doesn't even really suit the kindergartners. They have a hard time. It's just regular chairs like this. Um, so one of the things I've been trying to find is the right size furniture for. Have you found anything and how much? Um, the issue is finding something that, that rolls away. Um, so I'm, I'm still, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, or, or we can find some other way for the pre-K kids to be able to eat with. How many, how many, how many, I could probably find out, but how many pre-Ks do we have now that we would use this or would they use it on a combination of, are we talking pre-K and kindergarten or just pre -K? Yeah, I mean the goal would be so that at some point in the year the pre-K kids can start acclimating to what goes on in the rest of the building because they're a little bit isolated right now. Mm -hmm. they can, uh, to themselves, and some of that is because there's not the right size furniture in the cafeteria. Do they eat in the cafeteria now? They don't, they eat in their classroom. Um, That's a good idea. Getting them so it's just one of, one of those things. We had initially talked about like getting new cafeteria furniture, and I think um, there's not going to be the excess for that, but I thought a good start would be to just get a couple tables for the little guys. Do we have enough of room, even with the regular ones, regular tables in here, do we have enough of room to put a couple little tights type of tables and chairs in there? Or are we going to have to try to make a, a corner just for them? We would probably make a spot that would be just for them. Okay. Um, my thinking was that we would maybe, right now we have two lunches, so lower wing, upper wing, and so maybe uh, a pre-K, K, and one lunch, and then two, three, and then four, five, and six. Um, I still, I want to talk to the instructional leadership team and find out their thoughts on that, but mm -hmm. um, I was trying to think of ways to make the pre-K feel more like it's part of the rest of the school. Mm -hmm. okay. We Good should idea. get together pretty quickly, because if we need to encumber funds, we need to do it, like, now. So. Okay. 
So yeah, uh, some July 1st is coming doing. quick. Yes, it is. So yeah, and I, I just want to put in a plug for trying to be as transparent as we can about where the money's going at the end of the year because mm -hmm. that's always a, a question that we get from other stakeholders as to like where is the money going. So I appreciate you clarifying that we want to move money to school choice and that we want to use some of the money to pay for the um, summer hill. Right. And then if we st if we purchase right. these, I'd like to make sure we're clear about that so the sure. town and others can okay. see that. Well, and it, it's not a it's not a done deal, and it's, it's not an emergency. It's not something that has to be right. done. It, mm -hmm. It's something we can yeah, work on Yeah, but if next year. again, if you've got the funds now, yeah. that's not and a bad way to spend them. And then whatever left over after we take care of maintenance issues and cafeteria tables, whatever else is then left over, I would then say take some of that pressure off of school yeah. choice. Um, well, we can always put the money in school choice, and if we elect to. September, October, bring in those tables and chairs. Right. We could do it also out of school choice money right. if we, if and we, if a, we want to. If we want yeah, to. And that's a really good use of school choice funds, these kinds of one-time mm -hmm. expenses versus trying to constantly offset your budget salary-wise with school choice. That's, um, that would be my recommendation um, you know, moving forward, and uh, you know, I'll certainly share that with the new business manager as well, that you know, if you've got the capacity to be able to keep your salaries on the local side and use school choice for mm -hmm. some of these other things that right. you know can benefit all kids coming into the system which is really what school choice is designed for right. um, is to support that so okay thanks thank you good job on the budget mm. everybody <laughs> so far <coughs> okay public comment <laughs> Nichols children. <laughs> um, no, no public comment. Uh, so we'll move on to the unfinished business. Comprehensive. All right, so the first one is a We started this conversation the last meeting. You're kind of timing wise, this meeting I think was about two days early um, to when we got all the information regarding the health service grant. Um, and basically, you know, we applied for 70,000 and got 55,000. And um, if you look at like page three, it kind of breaks down the budget of this grant and then. Um, I think the, actually the last page is a nice um, summary of all the different, um, what the grant encompasses. But basically we applied for a grant and are currently we pay a stipend for a nurse leader. And the idea of this grant um, is to create a part-time nurse leader position instead of a type stipend nurse leader positions for the duration of this grant. And then the hook on this grant, like many grants, is they want you to pick up the cost in the final year of the um, of the salary position. So, you know, so we're looking at the salary positions at thirty-eight thousand dollars now for part time. Imagine year four would be around forty um, ish. But in in the terms of getting that grant, we're talking about two hundred twenty thousand dollars over those four years. You know, minus that forty thousand. You know, you really. You're, you know, there's a lot of money there to really firm up a lot of the health services um, things that we're doing in the district. Um, a lot of the <coughs> conversation around this was, it is, you know, will this grow staff? You know, um, it will in that fourth year, and then we have to re um, reapply in that fourth year. Um, the grant has another, a series of another two year. Um, additions that can continue going on, uh, extensions rather, um, that you have to apply for. So there is a checks and balances that we're doing everything in the grant. Um, and then in year four, there's kind of a natural pause where we'll have to sign on to keep going on it, where we can say, is this really a position that we want to keep on our general budget? Is this a grant where we made, we made strides um, to get these things done um, in our districts? Um, so that's kind of kind of summarizing because we've had a partially this conversation and then I've had this conversation several times with the different committees. So mm -hmm. any questions um, 
people will fund it. So you, you say that we have to fund it in the fourth year. Is that we can't unwind it in the fourth year? We no, so you, if you turn your, I'm looking at your packet you have, if you turn it over, basically there, you know, the, the grants do this. They, they, they try to get this, they'll fund you and they try to get the local district to pick up the costs to continue that type of services moving forward. Mm -hmm. So while technically we could enter year four and we could drop out of the grant, and you know, what, what can they do to us? Not, uh -huh. not a whole lot. Um, it is a small state, so to speak. Like we would not get another grant. You know, we would we would fall out of favor with mm -hmm. you know with this with this department in the in the in the state. So you kind of you know, and I'm putting my word that we will. Funded. So, if there was a dire financial crisis or that kind of stuff, we certainly could take take action to, to pull ourselves out of the grant, that kind of stuff. Um, you know, we're still in that fourth year. We're still getting the fifty-five thousand. So, you know, a lot of our other costs can be shifted over, so that you know that that salary could be made up. Um, some of that salary could be made up of you know, some of the other things that we're buying, supplies, materials, and mm -hmm. um, software, depending on where we shift those those lines. Um, so, and then also looking at what we use portion of that is um, of that forty thousand is you know, coming out of the regional agreement, which is around Judy, you know, what's the uh, percentage. Percentage is probably uh, low uh, teens. Uh, yeah. It's in, exactly. it's in the low teens. It's in the low teens, so you know that's the percentage. You know, so so we're looking at like forty six hundred bucks or forty five hundred bucks or so, maybe. Right. Right. I just I don't like the idea of being having to keep a position at the end of all this. Like that's seems a little restrictive. <laughs> and I'll be, in, in my in my you know as I said to the other groups, I really we really do need to catch up on a lot of you know putting you know we have good procedures in place, but just kind of strengthening what we're doing in each building mm -hmm. and, and some of the extra services that are um, required um, you know, by the state or recommended by the state. So this will let us catch up and I really do think we'll take a strong look at it. This is, I was hesitant of moving us forward based on that obligation and increasing. But when you look at the amount of money that we'll have you know, through the series of the grant, you're talking about, about $180,000 that we're gonna get for $40,000 and then we can decide if we, you know, um, right now we're spending twelve thousand dollars for that stipend for the nurse leader. So you're really talking about it's really only you know twenty eight thousand mm -hmm. dollars. You know, you really start kind of breaking down the math. So it, that number, the the liability, so to speak, on the district for that new position is relatively small for the amount of money we're gonna get. And then we really do have to look at it that fourth year. Um, you know, not let it just roll into a new position, I agree with that. Is, this, is the $12,000 uh, <coughs> budgeted at Currently, the same yeah. time for that? Yeah. Okay. So So um, that 12000 is something we're already paying right now? Is that what you We so. already have that budget in the budget. So, you know, um, what exactly we do with that, I, you know, would that roll into and work as part of this? Um, at least we have 12 out of the 40 already, roughly 40000 budgeted. For that, that fourth, that, that for that fourth, fourth year, year or in the future, budget. I mean, we already have 12. Right. That's part of it. So all we have to do is come up with another 28 right. or so. So it's really, it's not about the, the paying for it the fourth year. That's not really a huge, that's not a huge burden. It's that the idea that you're, so you're, you're adding, creating more staff. Because adding staff adds other costs right. as well. But they're also the going to fund part of it. <laughs> After the fourth year, correct? Correct me if I'm wrong. They, so we'll reapply for the grant. And continue. You can try to get fifty five thousand dollars moving forward, but it doesn't pay for the position. You can't show this paying for the position. Right. So I mean, you can get cute and, and, and fungible. And, be fungible with your money. What's that? You could be fungible, like move other expenses. You could. I mean, you could get creative that way to do that, but you wouldn't be able to do it dollar for dollar. There'd still be a cost. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, well, and at the end of the day, the question is, do we really need how many ever nurses in the district, right? Because we're adding a half a nurse to the whole district at the end of the day. This person's right? already employed, right? Well, that we're talking about? So, yeah, if you're calling this this position a nurse in the district, because they're not actually being, they're not doing straight student services, so you're not really adding a nurse. Okay. Versus you're adding another administrator. It's an administrator, <laughs> yeah. It's absolutely that. To the and so, so how are we back though, like this? Like they, would be a part, they would be hiring a part-time person um, 
for right for now the way it's set up is for the Conway position. So they'll be a part time nurse for a couple of days a week, okay. and then this person will do this position based on how they can arrange hours with the part time okay. nurse. But this and this isn't necessarily looking at how to create a structure that might be more efficient at the other end of it. It's just about collecting a lot of information about. Um, well, there'll be increased efficiencies in, in how the nurses are collecting data, how they're using software and that kind of stuff in each school. It's also mm -hmm. going to allow professional development in each school. So when you're looking at the budget, there's, I mean, there's a budget line that's very vague. And this is the budget line that got some of the biggest hit, but um, that nurse leader can come down, you know, can come here, let's say work with SD, and SD could have the day get a sub for the day we start talking about consultants mm -hmm. consultants also would be paying for substitute nurses so that the nurse leader could meet with you know the school nurse here and spend a day going through and, and fixing you know many of the different areas they're talking about doing how they're doing data collection how they're doing forms how they're mm -hmm. you know that kind of stuff um, and arranging services so some of that stuff is you know giving freeing up time with the current nurses who really can't it's very difficult for us to get professional development, even on our professional development early release days, because the amount of students that are still here that require nurse services. And so, so that, that'll help us in that area. Mm -hmm. um, could, could the money in the future help pay for Conway's <coughs> uh, part-time nurse? No. Or can't do no salaries at all with it? Okay. Yeah. We wouldn't be paying, Conway owns their own nurse, right. so and they're paying for their own nurse. I mean, we can't do this and create more of a bill for Conway. Right. Um, that would be the problem if we had benefits attached to it. So that part-time position can't be a benefited position um, that they're hiring for in Conway, unless they have two benefited positions, two nurse benefited positions, and they could, we're not going. That would really increase the costs. Well, one of the things that came up during negotiations, and I think I could speak for this, that sometimes the um, not registered, but the L LPNs mm -hmm. were looking for extra training. Would this person be able to help out with the that's LP the whole idea, right? Yeah, the LPNs would fall because the, the LPNs fall under the nurse leader's uh, purview of making sure they're getting trainings and that kind of stuff. So, yes, that was that part of the be, thing that we were talking about yeah. during negotiations that sometimes some of the training wasn't there, or you had to go outside to get trainers right. to come in. Where now this person. <clears throat> Could do more by right by sleep. Well, we better. also could pay for we also could pay for Someone these people to come in. Come in, in, to come in. It's not just it's not just the nurse leader doing the training. Okay. That's where you know they're going to be paying for, and also looking at what other schools are doing in some of the services because a lot of the you know starts talking about mental health services and a lot of the other areas that you know it's not just about band aids and and you know, flu shots. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you're talking about um, the mental health and addressing those students who come into have to leave the district or leave school to receive services, then they come back in. Our transition services are not very strong. Uh, communications with hospitals, um, uh, being a smaller school, I don't know how much it happens in, the, in this building, but you know, you certainly at the secondary level, if students come back and it takes, the kids are back in school for three days before we have contact with the mental health institution they were at, giving mm -hmm. us feedback of what they need for, you know, you know, uh, transition yeah. services. And so this is creating systems in place to address some of those things. Um, looking at, you know, um, high needs um, and um, students with, you know, um, who are you know, disadvantaged and you can kind of look through on the page one that there's the full scope of making sure that we're meeting all students' needs. Um, so, and like I said, it, the accountability to it is that in order to keep it, you gotta, you know, you gotta fill, you have to have grant reporting on it and mm -hmm. give the feedback and so there is some, some checks and balances on it. But okay. I think the greatest one, and I, Katie and I had, had a conversation on this, is that I think that this committee and I think where they show is year four, if there has to be a serious yeah. conversation. Is, and and I'm, I'll be honest, I'm not afraid to see it go in year four. Mm -hmm. I think it's worth the investment to get this, to move yeah, the bar of our services. And then can we do it a different way you know, I'm not, not knowing what it will look like in four years from now, but I don't see another administrator needed, you full know, right, full-time, yes, you know, yeah. unless unless we change the way we do services that all of a sudden we've increased our, yeah. what we can do for students. Well, it looks like there's also going to be a lot of good information collected that I would love to have that brought to the committee so we can learn from it as well. Mm -hmm. So, um, that'd be great. Mm -hmm. yeah, and your percentage of the split uh, with the full region it hovers right around 10 percent over the last five years so mm -hmm. that's the cost that would be born give or take 
do we have to vote on that? Yes, you do. Okay. So we have any time a grant, just for you're wondering why this is being brought forward, any time it's been our policy in practice um, that any time a grant will incur additional spending by the district, mm -hmm. the school committee votes on it. Okay. So there was that checks and balances, I think. I remember my early years when this kind of came in, because we were doing a lot of grants all of a sudden, yeah. we got stuck with positions That's and that kind of stuff. Worry. And I said, you know what, let's move from moving forward anytime. So not all grants go before the committee, but grants that will incur a budget, that require a budget yeah. contribution is have to go, or right. ongoing have to go to school. I'll make a motion for the <clears throat> comprehensive school health service grant approval of the four years. Just ask a question. I don't remember where I saw it, and you may have already said address this, but they weren't given the amount they said. Right? So originally it was seventy, now it's fifty-five. And, and and so the major adjustment in our budget line was what we would pay for consultants. Uh, that number was probably twice as large, and then they kind of calculated each of the line in order to make sure that we still are able to pay for. The 0.5 nurse manager. I mean, the salary. So that's the cost we'd have to cover weekly, or is that no? We cover what in year four we're going to have to oh. come up with the with we have okay. to come up with that 0.05 FTE in, in the fourth year. Okay. The fourth. The next three years, so we don't have to cover anything. Oh, okay. So we get 55,000 for the first three years. Yeah. You'll pay. You know, obviously the the, the 38,000 is the lion's share of that money being used, but um, yeah. Yeah. So okay. The rest of it. And then in that fourth year, we get the 55,000, but you can't spend the 38 of it on that position. So okay. you can you can move things like I was saying, you can move yes, things around, yeah. but you're still you're taking on there's there's going to be a cost. Okay, how many years does it go? When does it end? It goes on for 10 years. And you 10 can years? you can renew renew all the way up through, and that's why and it comes up this grant comes up every 10 years, okay. and so that's why it wasn't like the other thing I was like, well, you know what. Maybe not this year. Well, if we want to skip and sit out on this, we we're sitting up. We can't. They have some smaller grants and some other things you can do along the way, but this is the big mm -hmm. one that they, they fund for. Um, we, think we should make the best of it. Right. Well, that's, that's kind of the idea. That was kind of the idea when I was, you know, again, I, I went to, I had Sarah and Louise look at this just because they do a lot of grants because I didn't like the, the whole idea of hooks. And I was like, Darius, the, the hooks are in all of them. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You got to manage your way around it and. Um, Right, it's up quit, to us to manage You're really. right, you manage your way around it and then and then quit the ones after a certain point and get your benefits from them. And then in some cases, sometimes you do stay on, but that's a decision, mm -hmm. not for now. Okay. Well, I second the motion. <coughs> All in favor? All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Long-term planning. Okay, I think I was supposed to come back with that's something, you. which I didn't. So I apologize, but um, I guess I continue to just think it would be a good idea, and Darius and I have also talked about how maybe more on the district level it would be good to have a long-term planning to just have a longer-term view of where the district's heading, where the school's heading, so we know what decisions, how they impact the budget and how they impact the funding going forward. So one small step that kind of fits into that is that um, I've been having conversations with people, and I really think that I need to have a chairs group meet with me to discuss. Right now, we do things administratively, when I say administratively, with the school committee, that's really, it sometimes it puts unfair, it's an unfair advantage from one school district to another school district. I'm talking about our five school districts. Um, because of timing, mm -hmm. you know. For example, this nurse health grant. You guys are the fifth school to vote on it. You know what I mean? You're kind of. If you said no today, I would really been in a tough spot. Like, oh, what do I do moving forward? If I knew you were going to say no, I wouldn't have wasted, you know, five hours of committee time between all five of these. You know, you know that kind of thing going through this stuff, and really just having a chance to. You know, I'd like to have a group meet with, not to create another meeting, so I want to kind of make a good meeting time for this. Um, but a meeting with the chairs to talk about this is what's coming through. How do people feel about it? To get a general idea of, and also what information to provide. Because mm -hmm. I would say if I came in 14, you say, oh, can you give us some more information? You know, you got, you know, four of the districts waiting on one. And it, and it also sometimes it forces the hand of some votes because they feel like, oh, I really don't have a say in what's going on because of the way things are kind of going through. Um, it also comes up 
when we talk about, you know, talk about evaluation later, um, that was really a, an example of how, use the word dysfunctional our system is, is that mm -hmm. I started here with a conversation about what my evaluation would look like. Every single committee added thoughts and small changes and that kind of thing. By the time you get, it's like telephone, by the time you come back <laughs> around, it looks a lot the same because I was, able, you know, I was able to kind of curb people and say, oh, and, and not try to make it go too far. But if any one committee really went, ex kind of went out there and let's do this, and there was, we could have came back with five different models. But if I could have sat with some chairs and said, how do we want to approach this? And then they say, it still gives you input, but it gives you at least an uh, overall direction. I think that also fits into when you talk about, um, you know, kind of a long-term planning and how to approach that. You know, we do want to move together as, there's things you want to do as a school, but as one third Union 38 district, mm -hmm. you know, if we're looking at changing curriculum, like really we should be looking at, you know, all four schools, you know, so it's, you yeah, know, that you know, the size of that kind of stuff. I'm not talking about small fixes, but I'm talking about major things. Sounds efficient and logical. Um, but it does give the chairs a different kind of um, level of responsibility, and I guess you almost use the word power, but so <laughs> it has to be the committees that allow the chairs to do that have to know that the, you know, some of those decisions are going to be helping guide some of that kind of thing. So one, of the, one of the things that's been going on, I think I could say this, but during negotiation, uh, Greg, is Greg last name? Gotcha. Gotcha. He's been doing, he's a numbers cruncher, and he's been doing some long-term right. retirement stuff for the next, like, 10 years. Some of the numbers are, are kind of scary. What's going to happen? And he's done it for all four towns, mm -hmm. and it's amazing what's in the future for for some of the towns for retirements in a in a particular in a particular year. How can we not get a big hit on that particular year? I mean, he's estimating when they would retire, but it's within that you know yeah. year twenty four or twenty five or twenty six. Some of the towns are going to take some big hits on retirements and stuff. So this long term, when you start talking long term, I'm thinking of Greg. Greg already has helped yeah, us with that's some exactly of the what I'm thinking about, right? Exactly. That I mean, that, I mean, right. you you agree? I mean, it's his numbers are just astounding. Right. Well, but, it helps make better decisions now. That absolutely in the future. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, I think we want to engage um, Shelley in helping us mm -hmm. think about that. And that's something that could come. The other idea is so it's like what also helps set some of these these joint agendas. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, is for example, it's on, it'll be part of my, I might as well just do my whole superintendent report. Mm -hmm. Part of that is that when we when we close out the Union 38 negotiations, we're going to have to have another joint meeting to vote a new contract. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and so when that's going to, I'll skip into my kind of my semi list of things to talk about, but um, because the association has to have their uh, membership vote on it, it is likely they're not going to vote on it. Originally, I thought, oh, we're going to have to meet during the summer. But with only a week left of school, mm -hmm. you know, next week, but, and we're still, and we have a meeting next week, so this is not going to get wrapped up. It could get wrapped up before school, but not going to be wrapped up and voted by, you know, we may not actually vote the next year's budget, I mean, next year's uh, contract. contract until September. Uh -huh. So now you're talking about a September joint meeting. And we start talking about the agendas of a joint meeting. Sometimes I kind of say I feel bad bringing everybody together, so I try to make mm -hmm. the agendas as short as possible. But you know, I'm not the one who's surely you'd be sending the agendas. It should be the chair saying, you know what? While we have everybody together, let's not knock off this and knock off that, mm -hmm. and in that kind of thing. So I think I, you know, the, another that would be another thing that yeah, the chairs would do is help because that's really we, the could job. Could we do it? Just, could we do it in July or August? Because we're are we going to have to retro retroactive. Pay, pay back have, July first. Oh uh, yes, and so it's already it's already going to happen. Sounds so like a fiasco. It's already going to happen. Well, what's going to happen is you have to have two sets of letter of hires, and that's going to be Don's going to kill me. Yeah. So hopefully um, Don's not watching this. I'm I'm hopefully this is not live because um, <laughs> I'm going to have to kill me. But she's going to have to send out a letter of hire that's contingent on the passing of of the the new collective bargaining agreement, and then she's going to send out another letter to all employees. With their new, yeah. and these are all have numbers that all have to be double checked, that all to make sure the salaries are right, because it's basically so that is going to be the headache I think we're stuck with. I'd rather see us have a instead of waiting until September, I'd rather if we if if they vote because we can't do it until after they vote, right? They get together as a joint meeting, 
Um, we have to wait, right? Well, both sides, it's kind of one of those things, both sides have to approve the, the changes to the contract. Right. Okay. Um, it doesn't matter which order you do them. But, but then they, the chairs have to sign, the chairs would just have what to happens the is they, sign. The committees overall vote to approve the change to the contract and then vote to, for the chairs to sign the contract once completed. But the changes, the percentages, the numbers, any language is kind of, is in that summary sheet that we're, that you, know, you just got mm -hmm. the other day for approving. Yeah. Um, so you know you can guys we'll go through the we discuss what the changes are on the contract and and then when the full contract's done we you know we make it pretty and that kind of stuff it gets done by the I signed mean, by the chair. You know I don't know if you guys agree or not, but I'd rather see us have as soon as we can. I mean, even if it's the last day in June to try to get a, um, a joint meeting together, you know, do a doodle and see how many people can come. Here's the dates that we can do. I mean, would right. you it's prefer not gonna, that? It's not gonna change this letter situation I have because okay. the letters have by contract have to go out by January, by June 30th. Okay. So, so and, it, and they don't get done overnight. So, and they have to be, you know, and so, you know, that's gonna take, it takes that at least a week. So unless, unless we have, and the problem is there's a lot of going back, and I'm learning this as my first time through with the Frontier Contract, there's a lot of going back and just kind of fixing little languages. Oh, as we read through, we talked about this, but the language here, and you kind of, there's a lot of this little tinkering that I think is important because it wasn't done in the last contract and we had all these kind of written notes on the side and, you know, Frontier, I'm talking especially the Frontier Contract, I was constantly meeting with the union about, Oh, it says this, but it really meant this. Oh, they forgot that line, or you know, mm. that it was a lot of this kind of thing. Where the language isn't clear here, but we had a good, you know, a good relationship with the, you know, the, uh, the union leadership there. So it was, you know, no, that was the spirit of what we were talking about. So we had a lot of, we cleaned up all that in the contract, and so I want to make sure we do the same thing. That we don't rush it for what reason? You know what I mean? And so if we if we make the vote at the end of June, what's the difference at the end of June or the first week of September? The one big pain in the butt will be any retro pay. Um, and we can look at the timing of that. Or maybe we do later in August, and that Is way that they can pay? take the first paycheck. Retro well, on pay? On that Friday that, okay. that we That we're not <laughs> even before. That we're all gonna be home with our kids. <laughs> <laughs> right now, I will be sharing with you the statistics of how your families feel about that. Survey? My little survey. <laughs> that was one thing I threw in there because I'm just dying to know, you know. And so um, I'm around all that? summer, so I could be here. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, I, I have the. Do you have the results? I, I don't have it on this computer, so. Um, but I will be can sharing you send with it. To us? I can send it to you. It is overall. It is more in favor than against. But it's funny the comments because you also can write comments on each one. Only those who were against it wrote comments. <laughs> so, but uh, it's, uh, I, thought, I thought it was interesting. It was, uh, and a lot of people like, and there was a lot of, I don't care. You know, the, it wasn't the I don't care, it was the. Mm -hmm. One way or the other thing. Though. It didn't matter it to me, it doesn't matter to me. So, um, that kind of thing. So, but it was, in, I, and I'm gonna do more of those in those surveys. Yeah. It's small little side stuff that, more people are talking about that than they're talking about some of the other things. And it's just good mm -hmm. to get a feel for what's, yeah. perce what's perception of what people are saying versus, is that we get that a lot too. You get a voice in the in the community, right. and you're like, "Is everybody feeling that way?" And you know what I mean. It's the and sometimes that. Sometimes you just want to make sure, like, I didn't get that survey because I'm not on that list that you used to send it out. So you want to make sure you're getting all to all the parents. What did you get? Because I opted out of e email for my snow day calls, and that's the list that you called. You used. I use. I but didn't realize people were opting out people, of the snow day list. Yeah. And that, that was a survey question. I just, <laughs> that won't get answered because you were. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't, I didn't so know. It's good to make sure that you. So you don't get any of my message I send out to people? No. Good to know. I Chair. only get messages from Mary. Good to, good to know, Madam Chair. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just on the communications. You want to make sure that everything's yeah. consistent. So. Okay. Um. <clears throat> Okay, so right, long-term planning for the district, Survey. I think the chairs is a good idea. We and need to get started and we can start go that. I don't want to lose sight of long-term planning for the school, though, because mm -hmm. so how does this how all does that started? fit in with the role of the, the school council? I mean, well, I'd like to use the school council for the long-term planning. I'd like to get parents involved because I think that it's important that they're the purpose of a plan is that everybody knows what's coming. Like everyone knows where we're heading. So, if we can get a school council. We have to have a school council. We have, right? like, we have one. We have one. Um, it is not very large. I would like to no, say it's hard to get. It is hard to get people. Um, 
but maybe if we can, we're focused on getting that in place this summer. Are you volunteering? Is that? I'll try and get people to be on it. <laughs> I can ask them. <laughs> Or you can help me. I'm always trying to get people. Yeah, we'll work on getting some identifying. So are you guys not able to be way. on the school council because you're on the school committee? Yeah, we're not really supposed to be. I think we technically could be. We've both been on The it. purpose is to cultivate other parents. Well, what's Jonathan doing? <laughs> He's sitting around doing nothing. <laughs> I do see a car at your house awful lot, so somebody must be retired <laughs> at your house because I My see a car. car. <laughs> Um, anyway, so maybe we can talk about getting a school council organized so the fall, so we can get the ground yeah, running and move that forward. I think that would be there good. were three parents mm -hmm. on it, right? I don't know. Have they, the they people still? we were having a hard time getting were the community members because it's supposed to be not just Are right. the Mr. and Mrs. G? Because I ran into they're on it. They were not. I available. ran into Mrs. G at the town meeting and she asked me about it. She was wondering. If it had met because she hadn't heard anything, she was we interested. Sent them something, right? right. Yeah. That was. April. I would reach out to Don Skrasky. Yeah, let's get Don to organize that. Okay, nice suggestion. Or Mrs. <laughs> H. Yeah. Mrs. H could be another one. I mean. Yeah. There's a lot of people. We just I mean, need to get get focused on it and then give them a role. Right. If you're missing. Like you don't want to just have people on a council. You want to have a real. I mean, you have parents. You get your parents. You get your teachers. If you can't get the community member. That's the least, not the least important, but it's, you need, I mean, this is, for me, is really about the parents yeah. being involved I mean, so. and helping provide feedback and then hearing more what's going on. So there, yeah. so, so, okay. okay, so get ready, people, if you're interested in being on the school council, <laughs> let us know. Yeah, we're coming. We're coming for you. For you. <laughs> And if no one's interested, you'll be assigned. Yes, we're going to find volunteers. We're going to vote you in. Voluntold. Okay, central office staffing changeovers. So we have a bunch of different changes. Wait, did we go over these last time? We did go over that last time. Yeah. So the only thing that's ongoing right now is we've started the uh, interview process. We haven't started the actual interviews, but we've started, we'll be doing those within the next week for the facilities <coughs> director position. Did you get a lot of applications? Yeah, we're mid teens. That's good. So if you get three or four of them out of there to, in, you know, the interview out of. So the we have a meeting set for Wednesday with the interview committee to select the applicants to be interviewed. So. So you have a new director. Why is Kim's title director of education? Why isn't it elementary education? Elementary focus. So I changed the wording on that so that she works for in the central office right now. What Louise and Sarah used to do is if let's say there was a problem in Frontier, uh -huh. okay, and you know, you have a teacher on probation and a teacher, what would happen, what sometimes happens, they feel like they're being targeted. You know, so you're not performing well, you put on improvement plans, you're being targeted, so you, many times you want to bring in another observer, mm -hmm. and this allows being director of education with elementary focus, mm -hmm. still falling under all. She can participate in that. She participate in that. And what's Sarah's title? She's still she's director of education secondary, secondary. but her contract's coming up this year. Oh. So on the way. So they're gonna have the same title. Focus. Yeah, they're both eventually. Yeah, I mean, but they're both. They got a little term after it. I so see. you know what I mean. So it just allows it allows me to use them. Um, it's a lot of times where schools will 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 label someone an assistant superintendent because it gives you the powers. Right. I like that. I like that label. It gives them a lot more. It gives, well, it gives because it allows you to, to do things more with the state and, stay, and, and sign off on things and, and delegate mm -hmm. responsibility. I mean, that's what you know. I was on the school committee in Amherst when they went to assistant superintendent that they had gotten rid of for a while because of that. It was handing off some of those responsibilities. Mm -hmm. um, it, you know, it's something I could look at as I learn more about it. I, mm -hmm. You know, that kind of thing. Um, and I okay. also don't, anytime you change that term, it was also a political ramification. Because they're like, oh, what, do you, what does that mean? Right. Are they making, you know, they making more money? Are they do, you know, is that going to cost more? Why do you need to have more, you know? So I don't want to just do the name change and then have the, uh, you know, kind of the political fallout of not completely understanding why you're doing the name change. You know what I mean? So this one's such a small, right. small, a small in the name change, director of, instead of director of elementary education, it was director of education, elementary focus. Yeah. So. Can you say that room to do that? Okay. So, that makes sense. Yeah. 
And I don't know if like the community gets the announcements about, so we have new people. We have Shelley Pareto as the new Director of Business Administration. We have Kim McCarthy as the Director of Education Elementary. We have, remind me the name of the woman for the elementary, or the ed early education. Uh, is this a good moment? Yeah, it's um, Zeola. Or later? Zeola. Zeoli Smith. Zeoli Smith. They can come in. So I just think we want to make sure we want to get the word out, like that all these people yep. are here and in the rooms. Okay, well we have the global ed leaders coming to join us. Welcome. Some of the global leaders. Some of the global leaders. Yes. Did some of them go out or nine altogether? So some didn't come to school yet today. <laughs> so do we need to set something up? Yes. yes. We're going to look at the smart board and. All right, we'll move. I'll come smoke with this teacher. Here's some pop. That sounds really like a lot. At the end is the most recent. These are really old. You've got some neighbors in there. Friends and neighbors. Good morning. I'm going to miss your smiling face. Oh, yeah? Oh, I see. Yeah, they're going to the Olympics. Is she coming in any days? Good. Good. Right up there, would you have Okay. Like anything, it could be overwhelming a little bit, but. Yeah, sure. You didn't memorize it, did you? Okay. Come on, I'm good. I have this number two. Yeah, I was going to. See, they have you here, so. Number three? Anybody have a third? There you go. Mm -hmm. so, 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 right? <laughs> Global leaders, I just realized that you stand there, they won't get to the picture, so yeah, just move to the side a little bit. I don't think you'll be too comfortable that way, Drew. No, I wouldn't. That works. I can go up. Where was I have my knees. Where was yeah, this going down? Oh. That's a pizza shop in Deerfield. Oh. I forget what it's called. Primo's? Yeah, Primo's. So the children are going to give you some context for this slide presentation and we have some objects to pass around when we're done. I'm Sally Rice and I'm helping Terry and Paula with the Global Leaders this year and we have some things to tell you about being a Global Leader. And what's the uh, students' names in grade? Uh, we're, here they are. Okay, I'm sorry. This year's Global Leaders are and um, Noah Fellows, Adelia Hastings, and Ro Rowan Riley, who are in fourth grade. And Ra raise your Rowan is here from fourth grade, and uh, Adelia and Noah aren't. In fifth grade, we have Miguel Bartolon, Josie Joyce, and Karsten Kucher, and they're all here. Mm -hmm. Miguel, Karsten, and Josie. And in sixth grade, we have Drew Bennett, who's here, and Isabella Graves and Rowan Hauser. Okay. The English language arts core standards include mastering skills related to understanding other perspectives and cultures. So not only do we embrace that, but we embrace the um, United Nations Sustainability Goals, which are um, recorded here. We made posters about them. a paper plate project with a school in Tanzania. We exchanged pictures of our local community, communities drawn on paper plates. We received dozens of plates from Tanzania students and shared with them with classroom showing them on a globe where they came from, learning Swahili words and preparing their communities to lives. So going into the classroom is a big part of what we do. <laughs> we came up with some fun days to show off our school spirit, like Crazy Hair Day, Pajama Day, Book Character Day, Elf Day, and Dress in Green for Whitey Wolves Day. Is today Red Hair Day today? 
Noah. I saw a couple people with red hair out there. Well, there's one man. Oh, no, that's a regular. Dress. Okay. Yeah. And her son has red hair today. Yeah. Wow. It's a good day when it's red hair today. Yeah. yeah. We are a great connection. There was a great connection made with these high school students who were engaging and honest about their experiences. We're lucky enough to have connections with people from around the world through NMH, through um, Terry Anderson, mm -hmm. who lives there and whose husband <coughs> works there. At the December All School Meeting, we partnered with classrooms to present information about festivals of light around the world. We wanted to show that many people celebrate holidays using light and merriment. We had dressed like an elf day that day, which was kind of silly. The service pr project for December was collecting fleece blankets for Dakin Animal Shelter. We collected over a hundred pounds of blankets that were delivered to help keep animals comfortable in shelters. And that was in conjunction with Stephanie Appinell's uh, food drive, which also collected a lot of food. Every year, all of the students make Valentine's for Veterans in art class. The Global Leaders deliver these to the veterans at the Soldiers' Home in Holyoke. We play games with them, color, and get a tour of the facility. Then we get pizza on the way home. It's a nice annual event. We learned about the year of the pig, and we all wore red to school. The Global Leaders had a tea party to celebrate. <laughs> Everybody liked the year of the pig and the little ways that we celebrated. Did you guys really have tea? Yeah. All right. A lot of sugar. <laughs> <laughs> Every year the global leaders set up a breakfast for the teachers and staff to show them how much we appreciate everything they do. When was that? Well, it was about a month before the Official teacher appreciation? It's just before April break. Yeah, that's right. Maybe the day before. Mm -hmm. And the students, um, they make all the decorations, and then we have a secret decorating uh, session after school. Um, but they don't come to the breakfast. But they help a lot. Miss mm -hmm. Anderson hosted to Tibetan monks who were visiting MMH to create a mandala from, col from colored sand. We had a field trip to see it be being made and to talk to a monk about his life in India. That's pretty cool with the colored sand. I know, it's all made out of sand. It took all week yeah. to make that. So yeah. They worked on it all day for five days. Yeah. And then at the end, what do they do with the sand? Do you remember? They did what do they do? Yeah. Yes, Josie? They have to put it in a lake, in a body of water that's moving to spread the light or something. Very good. Mm -hmm. nice. So why would they why would they do that after they worked on it all week for forty hours? Does anybody remember why? Yeah, Carson? I think it's because they're like showing that nothing lasts forever. Maybe. That's right. Mm -hmm. Very good. Mm -hmm. you learned a lot that we appreciate everyone who bought a plant in Brent Young who grows these beautiful flowers and sells them to us at a low price. So we Every year, Santa Sana receives money from Waitley Elementary School, and we have a nice connection with um, the, uh, some schools there. And uh, so kids, we get to not only help um, provide <coughs> materials for their schools, but we have connections personally with these students through the Plates Project and through Skyping um, and now there's a new initiative in Pontico, which is um, further um, developing relationships with other schools within this country and outside of this country that um, Terry is spearheading, and it's catching fire throughout the district. I think it should be a big shout out to, was it Brett Young? 
Yes. Which is probably that's that's Mill River Farm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's a big shout out to them. So it's yeah. wonderful, it's and I think uh, it's maybe our eighth year doing it. And every year we say, "Oh, this was the record-breaking year. We sold more plants." And once again, we surpassed our record. So mm -hmm. wow. it's been really a great thing, and it's so nice that it's not just this one-time-a-year fundraiser. Like Sally said, you know, we have connections with the Sante Sana through the year. Mm -hmm. How far does the twelve hundred and seventy-four dollars go over there? A long way in Tanzania. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Our first year, we um, paid for desks for schools. They were building schools, and um, we were a little bit shocked and a little mortified when we saw on Facebook that they had painted on the front of every desk, donated by Waitley Elementary, no. donated by Wait <laughs> in white spray paint oh, wow. with stencils. You know, but. Um, I realize that they do that a lot. They, they're so appreciative. So it's been a wonderful connection. You got to go there, yes, right? Yes, was it last so year I saw the year it, before, yeah, um, 2017. And we had we sent some banners there, Waitley banners, and the whole school signed them. I never thought I'd see them again, in my you know, in my life. So that was crazy to go there <laughs> and see them <laughs> hanging in different schools. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Are there any questions? Okay. So let's pass out some of our things that we've done and collected. We can pass these around. What does the Sante Sana mean? Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. One of the things that I'm most proud of um, that these students have been doing is when they go into classrooms and they present to younger grades. That, that takes a lot and they've done such a nice job. We've done it maybe four or five times this year. And they are the ones to step up, these global leaders. If um, something happens and our all school meeting doesn't get hosted by another class, uh, the global leaders are there and they can do it in an instant. They're they put the leaders in global leaders. <laughs> <laughs> what was your favorite activity? <laughs> Go right down the list. What was your favorite one of the year? Of all the um, soldier song. The soldier song. Soldier song? Okay, yeah. cool. Probably the soldier song. It can't be the soldiers' home. Have you something different? What else? <laughs> <laughs> I liked um, the same thing like all the days, like all the um, activities. What did you like? Yeah. Activity. activity. Like the crazy like, hair days. Yeah. Oh, the fun like days? That. Yeah. <laughs> and probably the pizza you guys had after the soldiers' home, right? <laughs> I want to come to the crazy hair day next week. <laughs> <laughs> we'll let you know. Start, start working on it. That's a pretty creative. Uh, I'll do my hair red. red. Yeah. Promise or red green. green. That's great. Thank, Thank you. Any other questions? questions? No. Thank Thank you. You. We appreciate you coming and presenting to us. Now you're going to be on tape too. Your family's going to watch. <laughs> yeah, on TV. Oh well, no. <laughs> Okay. It's all right, your hair looks good. Yeah, let's go back. Yeah. Got my makeup a little bit. It'll be on at 7 tonight. 7 o'clock. Seven yeah. Oh, good one. Thank you. Oh. Uh, from here on, is it newer? There's some other. Can you put the light back on? Is it possible? Thank you, Sally and Paul. Thank you. Welcome. You have to be elected. You have to be elected to be. What's that? You have to be elected to be a global leader. It was formerly called the Student Council. So they have to write an essay, I think, and they're anonymous and the kids vote. Wow. Our weight because they're very impressive. I'm going to give you a little space. <laughs> okay, well, thank you for coordinating that. Well, they were very nice. excited to do it. Were they? A little nervous. Yeah, that's good. They're excited. Um, 
and it was a little tricky because we've got kids going in every direction at this point. Mm -hmm. That's awesome, thank you. Um, okay, so we're on to non-salary, non-union salary recommendations. Again, I'm gonna recommend that we have to go to executive session. Okay. So I don't know if you wanna put it to the end, if there's any other, do all the business. Yeah, why don't we do all the other business? We'll put that to the end for executive session. Um, so, chairs meeting, did you, you already touched that was, on that? That was okay. what I was talking about. That was the new I, business I, that you, you know. Capital projects, I don't know if we have any updates on sprinklers or anything like that. It's supposed to happen this summer, I think. Well, now you're asking me to jump ahead to the Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. No, 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 it's okay. okay. We, can, we can talk about it. Um, summer work will begin immediately after the close of the school year. The plan right now is that the sprinkler heads will be installed um, immediately after school gets out. Um, they'll start in the gym so that then once they're done in the gym, I can have the gym floor refinished. Oh, okay. So both of those things should should work well together. Okay. Um, and then there's other some other small things. Well, we'll be we'll begin yeah. painting classrooms. If you wanna oh. hop on over and help us out, you're more than welcome. Just give some direction. Supervise. Um, Two classrooms and the nurse's office will have carpets pulled up and replaced with tile, and then the office will receive the new air conditioners. Okay, right. busy time. Okay. Your first, is this your first summer? No, last summer was. Last summer, but I was halfway. trying to figure out what, which end was and up And have, have you hired a uh, high school person to come in and help? Same one that we had last year. Okay, good. Good. He's so he, he knows the ins and outs. <coughs> yeah, and he, um, our full-time custodian will be away next week, which is a tricky week to not have the full-time custodian in the building. So uh, Kaylin's going to start a little bit early, which is which works out well for everybody. Because okay. I think he'll have to end a little earlier than usual because he's going to college. Good. He was attacked by the squirrel last year, right? That was this building, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this morning from that same dumpster, um, I should have brought pictures, but there are three little raccoons in there. Oh, no. Can't went out, open up the they're not that small. Mirror, but I thought they were big, like but they're on his shoulder. Uh, and one of them is large, and the other two are a little yeah, bit smaller. Yeah, they were protecting the one high. in the corner. Yeah, there was two bigger ones like <laughs> hovering over this one in the corner, like you couldn't even see the head cute. until I opened up the side doors. So. But my invitation to look at it was, "Come on over here, put your head in the dumpster." I'm like, "Nope, nope, I'm not falling for that." <laughs> <laughs> wow, life in the country. <laughs> okay. Um, my update, I, one, I just wanted to thank a lot of people who are not going to be with us next year. So Louise, oh, Sloan, Bob list. Lesko, <laughs> Judy, thank you for all you've done. You've done a great job. You're welcome. Helping us. Um, and I'm sure I'm missing people, but I just want to make sure to acknowledge them on behalf of the Wheaton School a, Committee. What's your No. Um, your IA, I'm sorry. Who's leaving? Oh, and Judy. Miss Lively. Miss Lively, Lively, yeah. Lois. Lois, Lois, Lois yeah. yeah. She's leaving us, right? Retiring. She is retiring, right? So we want to thank Lois for her Let service. Let me know when you do have a, if you're going to have something for her. I'd love to come. I will let you know. It was fun with negotiations this year with, with that group. Fun. That, yeah. You don't see if you're those two words no. together. Did you have fun during the <laughs> we, Fun and negotiations. We did. And, and, yep. You yep. know what? And Lois, it was, it was just great at you know, Lightning. you can have a heavy conversation and then laugh hard after it's a nice <laughs> It was the thirty-eight dollars with the chocolate I bought on the last day that really sent the, everybody over the edge that day. So yeah, sure it's all about it. the food. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I know everybody's done a lot of work for the district and for the school, so I want to thank them. Um, the second update has to do with um, just I got a call from the town manager letting us know that there's a new crop being built, being grown next door, and I just want to make sure everyone's aware that apparently they're going to now be growing hemp, which is very different from marijuana. So, uh, but it looks remarkably similar. So just so we can make sure people are aware that it's not the same as growing marijuana in the same in the place. same field. Um, is there any odor in greenhouses? To that? Not in greenhouses. This will I'll be outside. Be yes, and in fact, the town isn't involved in approving that at all. That is actually a state prop. I, I don't quite understand the differences, but just um, there shouldn't be much concern about it. But we just want people to know that that's coming. so. There's no odor. Apparently, I and have not confirmed that. But if it's not enclosed, there mustn't be. I would. Yeah. 
Well, hemp is used for like, you know, it's a fiber, so it's used to make clothes and Parachutes. rope and things. So it's a very different purpose than marijuana. But we'll have the opportunity to learn more about that in the future. So field trip. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Um, so that, that's all I have for everybody. Uh, collaborative? Um, I didn't make it to the last meeting. It was the night of our school concert. But I did look at the, um, the um, agenda and attachment. And it looked like a lot of house clean. There was evaluations of the director mm -hmm. and a couple other people and the financial <coughs> report and things like that. Uh, principal, are you ready to share some? Yeah, um, so it's very busy time for us, as you can imagine. Um, at the end of May, we finished up MCAS, which was fabulous, and I wanted to thank the PTO for providing um, snacks for every day of testing. Um, and it kind of adds up. And uh, the students did a great job. They demonstrated a great deal of stamina, and that's a, one of the upsides of taking MCAS, is that you get to build your stamina, and the kids did a great job. Um, on May 20th, our sixth graders went to New York City and they visited the Tenement Museum and the Statue of Liberty and then headed over to New Jersey because um, apparently that's the best place to get pizza. Certainly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, in all of New York City. <laughs> <laughs> the students had a great time and um, what I heard from everyone is that they represented Wheatley Elementary School very well. Did you, you didn't go in? I was not able to, I was very disappointed. I had. Uh, I had a family obligation in Pennsylvania the same day. And I even, from Pennsylvania, was trying to arrange to, to catch them at dinner time, and the traffic did not cooperate, which is so surprising in New York City. <laughs> um, so I, I think it was just a really great way for this group um, of awesome kids to close out their experience here. And they did an awful lot of work to raise funds mm. to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. um, we had kindergarten visit day, which was, as you can imagine, adorable. It was <laughs> wonderful to have our, our new little friends in the building. Um, so the, the kids went down to the classroom and they visit with the teacher and um, learn a little bit about kindergarten and they actually take, a, take their first bus ride while the parents were in the library um, and they were getting information about what is to come. Oh, They're in the library wringing their hands. Yeah, they, you know, it, it was there were there were a couple loud noises coming at the uh, point where they were separating down there, but mm -hmm. for the most part, it went pretty smoothly. Mm -hmm. How um, many do you have? Um, ex are you expecting sixteen? Mm -hmm. right That's now? a good group. Um, it was it was great to welcome the new members of our mm -hmm. family. I was sizing them all up for like who's going to be on the PTO. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Did so you sign them up? It's a good chance in the beginning. It is. When the parents are here. Oh, you're new. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, on May 24th, that same day, we had a Memorial Day assembly in the front of the school. And um, similar to our Veterans Day assembly, it was pretty amazing. The kids, mm -hmm. the kids did such a great job. Um, the, a couple members of the band played the Star Spangled Banner. Two boys um, actually approached Mrs. Carr to see if they could play taps. They, they wanted to do that yeah, they ceremony. Did a great job. Yeah. Um, and the kids sang songs, and as I put in my report, uh, they've been practicing every day at lunch under the direction of Mrs. Stone, <laughs> our lunchtime choir director. <laughs> um, and then second grade students presented the veterans with flowers and a handprint wreath, which will be hung at the VFW. And the, the veterans were very appreciative. Uh, last Wednesday night was our annual arts night, which was also fabulous. Another opportunity for me to look at what goes on around Wheatley Elementary School and be incredibly proud to be part of it. Um, so we had the singing, the dancing. We also had, if you were here, um, the cafeteria was set up like an art gallery, which was pretty awesome yeah, you know, to see nice. um, you know, I see dribs and back drabs of the work that the kids do in art class uh, throughout the year but to see sort of the, the final product was, was kind of amazing um, another addition to this year's assembly was um, to have the kids sing the songs that they've learned in Spanish which I thought was great um, but as I pointed out in my report uh, the pre-k and first graders stole the show with their singing and then <laughs> 
jumping off the stage and break dancing on the on the gym floor, which will be much easier next year after it gets refinished. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's very slippery right now. It's good for um, That's true. Um, during these last few weeks, we'll be involved with Junior Olympics, fire safety lessons, sixth grade luncheon, transition meetings between the teachers, pre-K graduation, school picnic with families, and sixth grade graduation, which pretty much takes up every single day that we have left. Um, and then there's the bit about the summer work. The part I didn't mention is that teams of teachers are planning to meet throughout the summer to um, plan some awesome things for the upcoming school year. Um, and I would like to formally thank the school committee, students, staff, families, and administrative colleagues for supporting me through this first year. As a result of the way I've been welcomed into the Waitley Elementary School family, it was a year of tremendous growth and learning for me, and I'm really looking forward to year two. So thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions? Mm -hmm. Keep <coughs> um, we touched upon a lot of things. I was going to say, you got anything left there? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, negotiations is continuing. Uh, we did settle with the IAs, we tentatively settled the IAs, and we are hoping probably to wrap up next week with the teachers on Wednesday. Um, I talked about the director of facilities. The superintendent evaluation, it is. I was hoping to have it to you guys prior to the prior to this meeting. Um, you'll probably get it either today or tomorrow. It's basically in the final. I've asked some people to proofread it for me and do that kind of stuff. So that, um, but so it's at that level. So it'll be out very shortly. Um, but as I was kind of the, as I was explaining earlier, kind of as I got feedback going around, um, what I've created is uh, for each standard I gave a list of bullets of things I've worked on in that standard so that people can reference when you start to try to answer the questions, you're like, what, what is this question even asking? You can kind of look at the different bullets of different things. Um, one of the things that came out of the conversation with, again, with multiple different committees, one was that, you know, whether, you know, some superintendents are creating, um, you know, they create these binders and they hand them out to show evidence of all certain things. So instead of creating evidence, and um, I think the, the idea was don't waste a lot of time proving us you're doing your job, just go do your job and just tell us what you've done. Mm -hmm. And so if you want anything or, or follow up on any of the bullets, like what are you talking about here, or you want evidence to that kind of thing, all that can be provided, but rather than creating all the evidence that no one's in the past, very few people really looked at, um, you know, I'm gonna just give a list of all the things I've, I'm, I'm working on toward those each of those standards. And then, you know, this is a real trial year, you know, technically in my still my um, mm -hmm. interim year, I haven't really started my, so next year's we'll be developing goals and that, that first part of the form is all about the goals, which we really didn't do this year. Um, and then it kind of just give people an idea of what the standards are. Kind of a, kind of a pre-test, practice test, but mm -hmm. it, you know, there can be some data there and feedback um, as well. So you'll get yeah, that. Yeah, having those items would be helpful. Yeah, it's also, it also, as I was creating the list, I was like, oh, yeah, well, I guess you I did. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> what have I done? And you start off, you, know, you do one, and you're like, yeah. oh, and you just, oh, I did, and, oh that and was I did this that year, too. <laughs> yeah, so um, hopefully that part is, is, is fun. Um, oh, I talked about the summer meeting. If we may have to have a summer meeting or not, we'll figure that out. Um, we have our own, we do an administrative retreat. Um, We've been trying to change that word for years because yeah. we are going nowhere, and there's nothing special. There's I, no do spa, provide, I do provide coffee, so that's um, no spa. There's, there's no spa. spa. <laughs> but do you know that? Oh, there's one that the Lennox School mm -hmm. District goes to Canyon Ranch for oh, their retreat. Oh, do they really? For like three days. They must days. get a deal. Free. Yeah. Oh, Canyon wow. Ranch gives it to them for free. So if there's a huge, is there any spa in this area that they go after? Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, ours will probably be <laughs> at front. Ours will be at front. But new ownership. Um, no. Oh, no, that's the other one. That's the other one. That's the other one. Oh, yeah. Wait, the ballet. The way the ballet. Yeah, right. But but right. That's the new ownership. For the right. retreat. No, we, are, we will be at uh, Frontier. Um, and then mm -hmm. maybe an air-conditioned room if everybody behaves. Um, but we have um, four days planned for June. Um, just to kind of let you guys know what's going on. Uh, the first day on June 20th, we're doing, um, looking at our current strategic goals, what we want to kind of work on and develop our, our professional development plan for next year. So really kind of getting a lot of our ideas. A lot of them we already kind of have in a, a parking lot list we've made in our administrative meetings over the year, uh, but kind of getting things organized there um, for the next year. Um, 
can also welcome on new people in their new positions and that kind of thing. And the second day is a, uh, call it a work day, because we don't work on the other days, um, <laughs> is that we, a lot of, we've discovered, we've kind of known, but it's really been discovered, um, is the, from building to building, we have the same form or a different form for the same thing. And we really should be, mm, a lot of yeah. our forms can and should be the same in all four elementary schools. They should be found in the same spot on the website with one link to the form rather than each principal creating a new form, you know, you know, for example, a field trip form. It has to have the same things in it legally, but why do we have, I think we have probably two or three different looking forms. Mm -hmm. They should all be the same, they should be updated each year um, and so that we have consistency. Um, staff handbooks look very different. Each principal is required to kind of rewrite and update their staff handbook when really a lot of that stuff, while you want some uniqueness to your building, a lot of that stuff is is stuff that's in the contract or it's, you know, um, it's just good practice that would be in the same. So streamlining a lot of that stuff. And so right now, the, the I would uh, speak for the principals and Christy can nod her head no. Um, they're kind of excited about being able to they're also going to knock off a lot of their summer work where you're doing it alone. Mm, so like, you know, you can break up some of this stuff. So, so much so, so when excited. You're, uh, you are excited. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> you are excited. And um, it nice to get it done. Right. And the other side is <laughs> well, that Jason. Because for most of us, it's we're on our own um, <clears throat> to be able to come together and, exactly. and collaborate with other people who have the same. Um, mission and the tasks to complete it kind of cuts down on the work and also that you bounce your thoughts off of other people which is difficult to do during the year we email back and forth but mm. there's delays and so having us all right. in cool. one space will be really helpful so I am really excited yes. about that. Part. and we have a pre we have a pre meeting document that's online that everybody's adding to what they want to see mm -hmm. done that day and then we're going to prioritize I already know we're going to get I'm just listening to a podcast about expectations versus reality when you do planning <laughs> They, it, what's interesting our race is the, the, I don't want to say the excitement, because it is a work day, um, but there's already talk about can we do another day in July to, to do the second, there's no yeah, way we're going to finish all this, so that's the idea there. Um, and then the following Thursday and Friday, the last week of June, the administrative team, I'm bringing out the curriculum management solution, um, which is a, it's an auditing group that Sarah Mitchell has been a part of. Um, over the last five years, you know, if I don't know if you know this, but she goes off and, and works on on auditing teams that go in and audit um, really big school districts and looking at. Um, she does small school districts well, but she just happens to be on ones that like, she just did New Haven um, a few years ago. She I think she did like Houston uh, or New Orleans. You know, it's these kind of these big districts where they go in, they look at curriculum, they look at how the curriculum and instruction and how to kind of all goes through. But this her, that company also does, looks at um, also just trainings. And so she was able to get a trainer at a reasonable price to come up to have us look at, to evaluate our current curriculum and how to evaluate instruction. You know, so you talk about, I mean, principals for the most part know what, when you walk into a room what the instruction looks like, but really to be consistent across all the buildings, what we're looking for, how do we move that bar, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Um, um, is so they're coming in. Um, they're but you coming mean she's part years. of it. She works for them. She consults out, so you know she will go out on. Um, she takes time take, off to go does, do she that. She does take time off. Yeah. <laughs> she takes vacation days in order to go do that kind of thing. But it's it's she's able. It's again, we battled her and I battled over regarding whether it's a professional development or not. Um, because it certainly is in the sense that she gets to see how other districts are, and, mm, you know, what the practice. problems, very different looking districts in many of those, in many, many times, but how to look at it with a, you know, a keen eye and that kind of stuff. But this will allow our administrative team to start using the same language about where we want to go, because we all kind of come from different um, points. And um, we did a lot of this internally a few years ago where we try to calibrate we go in the we still go in the classrooms together as part of our monthly meetings to kind of look at things. But in order to calibrate, because if you and I both go into a classroom, we could walk out with two different reports, and our reports really should be if we have the same goals should be similar. Mm -hmm. They're not going to always be exact, but they should be similar. We and this is um, the idea here is to to start that that conversation and professional development there. So um, additionally, we'll be sending some members of our administrative team out to. Um, to their full training seminar, they have uh, category one, two, and three. Where is it? 
class one, two, and three. But yes, there's one, different yeah, level, level one, two, level, wow, one and two, level one, yeah. two, and three, and um, starting to do train more training, some training with them as well. You're not going in this time around. So after there's a few ministers are waiting to see after the initial training and then figure out if we're going to do that later in the process. But there's someone want to jump on early. So. Can I ask two questions mm -hmm. or one comment? Could we focus on the forms being electronic in the future potentially? Rather than just forms. paper, when you guys are working on redoing the forms and just to yes. encourage as much to be electronic right. as possible, save paper, and it's nice to reference things online when you can't find the paper. <laughs> in your um, <laughs> absolutely, trying to make sure all our forms get online, so yes. when so it doesn't have to be the old lost in the backpack. Where we run into a difficulty is anything we. Do, provide electronically we often provide in paper because yeah, so it's it's that balance so depending on what the form is yeah I mean we like want to have speak. it all in one place yeah. is kind of nice option that's the and the next year when you're looking for it right yeah well we're definitely the idea <laughs> and is the handbooks. yeah definitely getting everything online um, again and then I could just put it up once and have everything linked to it and, you know and so using more of the Sometimes it's even hidden pages in which you you link right. to that kind of stuff, but um, yeah, just sort of leveraging the website and leveraging right. electronic would be nice. Yeah, That's I agree. How a lot of things are. These so, is the handbook already? Does that already exist? This, yeah, it's, and it's online. It's again. So each school is different in this regard. How how well the handbook is is how useful it is. I mean, does it have all the sections? Some schools have. All, it's all Ours on, is it's on thorough, it's on an online there's some that are online it's, it's all digital online so it can be updated by section um, and that's you know we're looking at possibly going that way mm -hmm. so that it's all that's where it is we're not going to do printed copies of it you go online there it is you know it's a yeah. different areas can be updated as the year mm -hmm. goes on that kind of stuff um, yeah. so there's a lot of good information it's it, sometimes it just needs to be updated and uh, correct <laughs> So. Correct. Because anyway, there's I areas that encourage website right. information. And, and there's because there's areas that are weightly related. Then there's areas of you know policies and District. procedures that get update that get updated every couple of years. But um, yeah, if there are any grants for that, you might want to look for yeah. grants for web nice. electronic nice. communication. Um, and then what was my other comment? Oh, who's on the administrative team? The principal. Like this, when you say the administrative team. It's a good question because I break up, <laughs> and you'll see this in my evaluation part. We have, I do three different meetings. Okay. Um, I have three different administrative groupings where I have meetings and things coming out of I have the principals, which mm -hmm. guess what's made out of. Okay. Just the principals. Because um, yeah. there's, there's stuff that's just building based and, and that kind of thing. And occasionally the curriculum um, director, the educational directors will come to that meeting if they're, if they're have stuff on it, but we try to keep that meeting small. Okay. The admin meeting is all the principals, um, the curriculum um, directors, so Louise, I'm not Louise anymore, <laughs> Kim, Sarah, um, early childhood coordinator, um, Amy, and um, director of special education, uh, so Karen will be there, and Depending on what we're talking about, sometimes I have Bob there for facilities, sometimes I have Scott Paul there for IT, IT mm -hmm. if there's IT issues. Um, business manager? Yeah. Just business manager, not only if, if during budget, so pre budget season, the business manager would come and kind of give an overview. But even then, I have them come to the principal meeting because it's usually a smaller, it's a bigger, the other point means it kind of a, it's a bigger kind of show. And then I have a third meeting of, um, I call it curriculum core. And name different things, um, but that's just uh, the uh, education um, directors. So just the, th the three of us sit down. So who's going to your retreats? The, or admin, the admin team. Planning meetings. Or the admin meeting? team. So everybody. Everybody. Will be, everybody will be there except Bob. Second group. Bob gets out of it, okay. but um, the business manager asked Shelly to come as well. So she. Okay. It's also for her gives her a chance to. Uh, Meet and, meet, see, meet and see, meet and see the team function. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that's really where. Um, you know, Judy and I had, had a conversation. One of the things the TMS had come in, running in <laughs> area right now. Shelly started yesterday doing. She's doing a few days in June, and she's had the ability to meet with people. And we were kind of talking afterwards. It's like the little one thing at TMS. They came in. It was just mm -hmm. you know, yeah. they, they weren't able to sit down and have 
conversations about how what does what. I mean, they did eventually do that, but it was more like open the spreadsheet and, spread like, and give me the number. Yeah, or somebody would ask a question. It was like, okay, so who? Where do I go? For who that? do I need to find right. that piece of information from? Mm -hmm. So it was a little bit right. kind of on the fly. So yeah. And, and Judy wasn't here. She goes, no, wasn't here for the first four months. But it was also, I know they said, and you are, <laughs> <laughs> you're asking me this question, <laughs> you know. So right, right. so the, the, we're doing it a better, uh, better onboarding, I would say, with, with Shelley. But I asked her to come to that meeting. and She's going to come to that. So to see that meeting. So. Okay. Okay. All right. There we go. Thank you. And you, you need a summer vacation. I, I have to find some good plans. You know, I'm working on a house, so I don't have a lot of free cash, but <laughs> we'll find something. Maybe we'll do some camping. Kind of like that retreat. Okay. Okay. I'll go on this administrative <laughs> retreat. Okay. Any other questions or topics? No? We're good. Motion to. Adjourned. No, no, we're going to go to executive, executive session. Oh, we have to go to executive session. Sorry. Okay, so motion to go to executive session. Concerned to MGL Chapter 38, Section 21 2, to conduct strategy session preparation negotiation with non union personnel, conduct collective bargaining sessions, or contract negotiation with non union personnel. We have to do a roll call. So you're going to go for both, though, oh. just so you're also, you can probably just need to say the section 21 of 21 dash. You're looking at both. For union and non-union, we're going to be discussing both because you're okay. probably going to ask how the negotiations are going, and so just to be clear that we're talking about both things. So. Okay. So and then people don't need to come back. We can just adjourn yeah. after that. So. Actually, we're probably going to have a vote coming back in. Yeah. I think oh, we're, going have a vote we're going to vote on 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 the, on the raise, or are we going to? It's going to be up to you guys. Okay. okay. So there may be a vote. So Mary there. may need to have to come back. We can go get her. We can go get her. Okay. Thank you. So. Thank you. Okay.